two out of three commercial diving fatalities involve Delta P. It is invisible to a diver and it strikes suddenly without warning. There is almost no way to escape once it grabs you. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about something that absolutely still frightens me till this day. Some of you may or may not have heard of it, but if you haven't then you're in for quite the ride today. Today we're going to be looking into some of the incidents caused by Delta P. Now if you don't know what that is, it's basically the mathematical term symbol of change in pressure. No, I'm joking, but um, well technically it is that, but that's not really the specific topic of this video. Delta P stands for differential pressure. And that basically describes the potential diving hazard in which there is a body of water movement. There's like water movement from an area from higher pressure to an area of lower pressure. Now, if you are still not catching on with like what's going on, um, do not worry as we'll go more into depth along um, so like some more like terrifying examples from it. Now, I heard of this diving hazard a long time ago from a very old YouTube video called Delta P. I'm sure many of you have seen it as it has a mat like it's amassed over like six million views at this point. And the video pretty much describes what Delta P is. This is definitely one of those videos that just pops up randomly on like your recommendation, like recommendation section at like night. But today, I myself am going to explain what it is and together we're going to look into like some of the terrifying incidents that have occurred in the past but as usual I don't want to waste any more of your guys' time so I hope you all enjoy the video okay so let's get the boring part out of the way real fast what exactly is delta p well it's essentially a diving hazard between the difference in pressure like mentioned previously this begins to happen when water moves from an area of like high pressure to an area of like lower pressure this then proceeds to create some type of force like quick like force and like that is pretty much strong enough to entrap almost anything in its way so basically the difference in height between the two bodies of water would generate like a sort of like a suction force through a like through like some type of hole or opening in the barrier between them now there's no risk when the water when there's like no water flow obviously but once the water like once the water flow starts the forces exerted are usually very substantial now i could crunch some numbers and come up with uh, like my own type of equation to like show you guys the difference in pressure but instead i'm just going to show you guys this picture right here do you guys get it now no okay well let me just show you guys this video or feel a delta p situation as you dive near it it grabs you suddenly and it doesn't let go until the pressure is equalized when it's got you it's also, if you're wondering how strong the force can get, let me just show you guys a clip of the delta p video real fast. If the difference between the depth of water is 50 feet and the diameter of the pipe is 10 inches, the force of water exerted on the valve is nearly 1,700 pounds. If the valve was suddenly opened and your arm was near, it would be sucked into the hole instantly. Trying to remove your arm would be like trying to lift a car completely off the ground with one hand. Now this, like I mentioned previously, is a diving hazard, so this happens more often to commercial divers who have to do construction underwater. Now I'm gonna say it right now, these divers do not get paid enough. Apparently the average salary for one is 60K in the US. The amount of work and preparation they have to do is absolutely insane. They're basically putting their life at risk every time they show up to work. Anywho, we're getting off topic. Basically, commercial divers have to work underwater and do some tasks that they're pretty much given. Now, this is where their biggest enemy comes, which is Delta P. Delta P is a diver's worst nightmare, as I can imagine. In fact, two out of three commercial diving fatalities are caused by Delta P. So divers must, uh, like, all time be prepared for, like, a Delta P hazard. So when a diver is working inside a structure that is sealed, pretty much, or, like, partially sealed, um, such as like a pipeline or a ship's hole or just something like that, there can be a significant difference in pressure between the inside and the outside of the structure. If the pressure inside the structure is greater than the pressure outside, it, it like can create a suction effect that can like trap almost any diver inside, making it difficult or impossible for the diver to exit. This is known as a suction entrapment or a vacuum entrapment. 
and can be very life-threatening to the diver. So to manage the risks associated with Delta P, commercial divers receive extensive training in safe diving practices, including techniques for managing Delta P hazards. They may also use specialized equipment such as like pressure gauges and like pumps to regulate the pressure inside the structure and prevent suction entrapment or collapse. So I believe now we all have like sort of like an idea of what Delta P is. So now let's look into some of the incident like Delta P incidents that have happened. This first incident that we're in touch upon here happened on the 26th of January 2016 in Norway, Europe. To my understanding, a diver was working for a mobile drilling unit on the location on shore. So the incident occurred when the diver was preparing to blind off a torpedo pipe on the rig's platoon. The torpedo pipe was a pipe with a diameter of 0.45 meters running through the port like the platoon of the rig which allowed for wires to be used when like when thrusters were pretty much replaced. It also describes how the length of the pipe was 13 meters with the lower valve 1 meter up from the bottom and one upper valve 1.2 meters from the top of the pipe. Now you're probably all wondering why am I even talking about the sizes of the, like the pipes and the, like the holes? Well, you have to realize that with the measurements like this, it made the valves almost roughly the same size as the pipe when it opened. So the valves were pretty much, were, they were like partly open to equalize the pipe pretty much. Here is a picture so you guys can get like a better understanding of how the situation is looking. You have the diver below and the pipe leading to the top. Okay, now what went wrong? When the diver introduced air into the pipe, an artificial uncovered concrete plug on the top of the upper valve broke and the diver's head and left arm were sucked into the pipe causing great pain. So basically a plug on the top basically broke apart and this led to an insane suction happening and capturing the diver before he can swim away. So the diver's head and left arm were then sucked into the hole. Moments later a standby diver would realize what just happened and enter the, the water to rescue diver 1. Diver 2 would then make several attempts to rescue diver 1 and eventually bring him up to the surface within 9 minutes. When brought to the surface, Diver 1 would stop breathing and would be promptly sent to the hospital where he gained re where he regained his pulse and breathing. However, only two days later, he would be pronounced dead. The report and safety commissions would rule it out as a fatal diving incident due to uncontrolled differential pressure. This one, this incident kind of shows how strong the force can be when the difference in pressure is revealed to something or someone. Also, you see how as we talk about a couple more of these, how there is a lot of info, like there's not like a lot of information around these incidents and the reason for that is because it happens so frequently doing research on these diving incidents there are a tons there's, there's just tons of reports of these incidents where sometimes they don't even mention the diver's name and simply just put on the report just as diver this next incident we're going to touch upon here um, is actually mentioned in the Delta P original video, but I thought I would talk about it here as well. On April 16th, 1998, a three person dive team arrived at a hydroelectric power generation plant to steal to like seal off some leaks on some valves. Now, originally, the valves were thought to be giving excessive water flow, so the team was told by the operating facility that valves were all closed. After the first diver was conducted, the diver reported that he thought the valves were in the, were in the open position, but this was verified by the the plant operating personnel so the diver returned to the surface and the wind started to close the large gate valve the pad of the pad valve was manually cranked shut and with the operating personnel on the dive team taking turns on the crank handle pretty much now the diving team began to question the operating personnel as they saw that the status of the like the indicator states that the gates were not fully closed. Now the operating personnel stated that the indicator was never correct and pretty much directed the divers to close the valve until the crank handle could not be turned anymore. Basically telling the diving team uh, it's closed. Trust me, bro. When the employees reached the point, the operating personnel informed the dive team supervisor that there was a still a serious leak and that the divers should use a caution whenever entering. While in the water, the diver and the team um, were able to communicate with each other using an intercom. They relayed to the diver to proceed with caution and don't take any chances. However, things after this would start to go horribly wrong. Moments later, after the diver entered the water, the diving team would hear screaming over the intercom. Almost immediately, the 
ever would get caught in one of the gates that they claimed were closed. The diving team and the tenders on the surface pulled on the umbilical cord or line with assistance of the supervisor and the line broke loose. When they reeled in the lifeline, they found that the connection to the diver's harness was broken as well. The connections line and air hose were also broken away from the attachment points to the helmet. While waiting for a rescue dive team, the gates were cycled open. The company came up with a plan to look for the diver when he didn't come up with the help of the site's emergency personnel who were the most knowledgeable in the area pretty much. After two divers failed to locate the missing diver, it was decided to seal the valves and unbolt the lower chamber entrance hatch so that a rescue dive team could enter. Following this procedure, the rescue dive team recovered the missing diver 12 hours after the lines were broken. The helmet was not damaged in any way and neither was the wetsuit. However, the diver may have been drawn into the pad valve area due to the like abrasion of the brass weights and the helmet's bent valve. The diver drowned and had apparently been sucked into a fully open pad valve and down the tube. This final incident that we're going to talk about um, occurred during a saturation diving operation in the Norwegian North Sea in which divers are kept under pressure for extended periods of time, living in like a like a diving bell and pretty pretty much being transported to, to and from the work site in the decompression chamber. And this one happens to be the worst out of the rest of them. On this particular day, four divers were in the decompression chamber preparing to return to the surface after a dive, while a fifth diver was still in the water at a depth of like 1,148 feet. So saturation divers are not the same as commercial divers. Saturation divers will spend many days up to weeks living in a, like a cramped high pressure chamber where they eat and sleep between shifts. Now the pay is great for these saturation divers. They get between like 30k to like 45k a month but it's intense work. Saturation divers must be very careful careful when they start to ascend to the surface. If they ascend too quickly from the high pressure of the deep water too much to the pretty much lower pressure at the surface, the nitrogen molecules that they have like that have dissolved under pressure quickly expand and will cause fatal conditions. The deeper you dive and the longer you stay underwater, the more nitrogen gets dissolved into your bloodstream. You can kind of think of it like a soda bottle, like when you shake it and then you like open the cap, the gases that were like under pressure formed and expanded inside the bottle when shaken pretty much. So what they must do is slowly ascend to the surface to avoid decompression sickness and take breaks to let their bodies adjust and exhale the, the, the nitrogen. So on Saturday the 5th of November 1983, four divers were in a diving chamber system on the rig's deck that was connected by a short passageway. So basically the picture on screen is what the diving bell looked like. So you can have, so you can see that you have the chamber one and two and you basically have the trunk that was kept sealed by the clamp. You can also see that you have the four divers inside the chamber and also have they also have another two assisting divers outside the chamber. So in total six divers operating the diving chamber. Now before the incident I think it's interesting to talk about what's the normal procedure they were supposed to do before um, technically it went wrong. So basically it was supposed to go normally like this. They were supposed to close the diving bell door and slightly increase the pressure in the diving bell to deal with the door and then proceed to close the first chamber door. Then slowly decrease compressurize the trunk until it reaches a certain pressure and finally open the clamp to separate the diving bell from the chamber system. I hope I explained that correctly. That is what it was supposed to happen. However, it did not. At approximately 4 in the morning, an uncontrolled release of pressurized gas occurred in the chamber, causing a rapid decrease in pressure and basically resulted in an explosive decompression. One of the assisting divers would accidentally detach the diving bell before the chamber doors closed, and this would create a, pretty much what is known as an explosive decompression. Now, it's still unknown why the assisting diver would release the clamp that kept the trunk sealed, but almost immediately, but it would be too late. The entire capsule would lead to a violent decompression that blasted away the trunk, pretty much striking both of the assistant divers outside, one of them being killed instantly. As for the four divers inside, they would die horrifically. While inside the chamber, the pressure dropped from in a, like nine atmospheres to one in an instant. One of the four divers inside the chamber was was near the front of the partially open door in the chamber when the pressure was released. This absolutely led to his body being sucked out through the opening narrow way and tearing his body apart and ejecting all of his eternal organs onto the deck. As for the other three, with the instant decompression happening, all of them would die instantly with the nitrogen in their 
their blood erupting into gas bubbles. This would lead to their blood pretty much boiling and killing them instantly. Out of the six divers, five of them would be killed, with the surviving diver who was still in the water managed to swim to the diving bell and was rescued by a diving support like vessel. A subsequent investigation concluded that the accident was caused by a human error. However, there have been many other investigations leading to to be an error within the diving system itself. The investigation that followed revealed that the incident was caused by a failure in the valve. The valve had been replaced with an incorrect type of valve during maintenance work pretty much just prior to the incident. In addition, there was an, there were issues with the emergency procedures and the design of the escape hatch, which made it difficult for the divers to escape in that type of emergency. As a result of this incident, the diving industry implemented a number of changes to improve its safety standards and procedures, including better training for the diving personnel and improvements in equipment and procedures and stricter regulations. This incident is so brutal and horrifying, let alone just being in the water for weeks on end, and it's terrifying alone. If you guys don't know, I don't mess with water, absolutely not. More specifically, like huge bodies of water where I cannot see the ground. Like the ocean, no, I'm not doing that. I'd rather just swim in a pool where I know where what's in the water with me. This is such a horrific way to die, honestly. Um, I would need to be paid like millions in order to do this. Actually, no. Actually, no. I just wouldn't do it. There are hundreds upon hundreds of accidents and incidents, like incidences that have happened over the years because of this. Many have lost their lives due to just one simple mistake or just some type of error that occurred during their dive. Now, of course, divers do have to go under extreme training to prevent this type of stuff from happening, and the dive team or company always has to follow safety procedures when things like this are possible. But sometimes accidents happen and it just sucks to see it happen. There are hundreds of procedures and safety documents that I have found that go over how to prevent Delta P from happening till this day, but till this day, it's still a common occurring problem for commercial diving. Apparently, 80 divers lose their lives in the US every year due to diving accidents, and this is just this is kind of off topic, but for underwater, wel underwater welding, there is an estimated 15% chance of death. That is insanely high for a job. Although these jobs may pay really good sometimes, sometimes it's just better to stay safe. Well now, thanks to Delta P, I am terrified of getting trapped at the bottom of my swimming pool. By the way, there is an incident where that does happen. While repairing a pool bottom, a scuba diver was came too close to the pool drain and was trapped at the bottom and died. But I think we're done for the day with incidences. Thank you all for watching. I really hope it was as entertaining as you guys for you guys to stick around to the end. Subscribe if you enjoy the content like this. But again, thank you all for everything. Thing. But yep, yeah, that's about it. Nothing left else to say, so I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye.